sometimes I feel like I, I can get really mixed up with history. Does anybody feel like that? This isn't too uncommon later on in life as we start to forget names and dates. But other times, this really isn't our fault. A lot of times, we're only taught just a little bit of a story. And important details are kept out. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, I recently discovered a few important details about stories I heard about history that have now made me completely cynical about everything I have ever and will ever <laughs> learn about the past. Take the poem, Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. Has anybody ever heard that poem? For any of you that don't remember why you learn that poem, it's based upon Paul Revere riding his horse through town from the Boston area up to Lexington to warn his fellow countrymen that the British were soon to attack. The battle that would later ensue would mark the beginning of the Revolutionary War. Interestingly, just about everybody in this room has heard this poem, and I'm sure you've read a lot, read a lot of textbooks at that time. Maybe none of you have ever known that there was actually two writers that night. William Dawes and Paul Revere. Both two separate people riding two separate routes with the same message, and only one is widely remembered through time. Well, this is pretty easy to tell why, is that William, his plan wasn't very effective. William decided just to ride his horse as fast as he could and only stopped a few times along the way. Well, Paul, he was more strategic. He knew who the connectors were in town. He knew the people that were at the heart of various social networks who could help him broad base this message, whether it be a judge or a barber or a political community member. He knew that their voice would carry further than he could ever in just a little bit of time. William made it to Lexington 30 minutes quicker than Paul. But Paul is the one that gets the credit. William is now remembered through time, and with him dies an important message. Sometimes it's not about how fast you can ride your horse. Sometimes it's about who you know. Sometimes where you live can make you really narrow-minded. I know as everybody here being in Chicago right now, I'm sure you're aware that in 1871, Chicago experienced one of the most destructive fires in our city's history, the Chicago Fire. Did you hear that? That fire raged for three days, burned down three square miles of land, killed 300 people. But I'm sure a lot of you didn't know that at that same very moment in time, on that exact day to that exact hour, there were four other large fires in the Midwest that were more destructive than the Chicago Fire. In Fishtigo, Pist Wisconsin, alone, 2,000 citizens died. They fought a fire two times the size of Rhode Island. More than ten, tens of thousands of citizens were injured. To this day, that very fire remains the most destructive fire in terms of loss of life on record in the history of the United States. Selfishly, us in Chicago, a lot of us don't know about these other four fires. Even though Chicago only made up 10% of the total loss of life over those couple days. Sometimes, I get mixed up in history. Better yet, sometimes important details are left out. 